so I have a little bit of like very speculative possible history on this particular species of like alien life form that is so hostile to Earth. And I piece this together from various readings that I, I did over the years. And it may be, and I would say that it is highly speculative and hypothetical. So I will just give you like a notion of, of how my thinking is going right now on that. Um, because you'll never get the truth from the demon world, that's for sure. <laughs> um, there is a story that Venus ascended, uh, Ra, the law of one. There's a story that the planet Venus ascended some while back, many, many long years ago, and that amongst those who ascended, there were two individuals who ascended uh, what they call uh, in the orange light. This is the law of one by Ra that explains this. And that means that they had perfected their energy, not through the heart chakra, but through the very difficult mode of, of willpower. Uh, of the desire to control two such individuals, okay? Um, that is all I read about it in, in the Law of One. So the question is, what became of these two individuals? They were somewhere in our solar system. And so then, just out of... Um, wandering mind, I, my mind came to the, the asteroid belt, um, which is said to be the remains of the planet Maldek, which was destroyed a long time ago through some catastrophe. And so in that planet, uh, and perhaps in, may, may be inhabited by beings, and, and the planet itself, because of that destruction, perhaps by a great meteor, who knows? Um, so now, let's see. So they, they may possibly have come from Venus. They may be those two individuals of which the Law of One spoke. And then my mind wandered to the thought of the asteroid belt circling around the sun. And there is also a story, a speculative story, about a planet called Maldek that was said to once exist uh, where the asteroid belt is now. And that by some great catastrophe this, of suffering, uh, great suffering, this um, planet and, and any inhabitants it may have had was completely destroyed. Some speak of soul fragments that were there, that were circling about there in the astral plane and so forth. It's my feeling that the destruction that took place there may have been a meteor. Uh, that would seem to me to be a, a very probable event. And it seems to me that that astral realm, which was so um, torn asunder by suffering and, um, and soul fragments and uh, the suffering of the planet itself, might have been uh, a, a definite lure for these two individuals. After all, their desire, their total desire was to control and dominate, and they, have no, they had no hard energy according to the law of one. I don't know how they could survive like that, but, but apparently they had very little, no, very little or none. Uh, the story that I've been hearing from the demon world is that the, they are unable to uh, survive the experience of great heart energy uh, in those that are taken over by them unless, um, uh, un or because then they're, they're, the sex drive of their subjects is, is ratcheted up and then there's a desire amongst those who are too greatly terraformed to 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 injure or to kill the people that they are um, that they are having sex with. Um, 
So that, I don't think, that's not really to, um, to, to upset you. It's, it's more of a, like a clue that people who, that all humans need to unite together and that people who s suffer the horrible fate of falling to these, to these violent behaviors, what they need is cleansing, purifying, rather than, and they need to have their, their etheric nets uh, cleansed and purified so that they can be free of these kinds of behaviors because the human heart would never, in its unblemished state, would never admit of such behavior. But apparently, this kind of behavior is like an aim of the, of the demon world. Do you understand? They're not here legally, and we can get rid of them, for sure. And I'll get into that in a minute or two. So back to the asteroid belt, right? That would have been easy pickings because there were no, apparently, only soul fragments left. There was no willpower to, uh, to stop them. So they might have, um, they might have hung out there for a while, yeah, and uh, consumed like the, the negativity of those soul fragments uh, as food for a, maybe a long time. And when, when they had finished with that or as opportunity arose, they might have like hitchhiked or migrated via um, um, meteorites descending from there to Earth. Uh, and in, in that way begun to t take advantage of the human population here. Oh, this is a wild theory I know. This is just a thought I had that maybe, maybe this is a, a problem from our own solar system that we're fixing right now. So, and, and believe me, it's going to be fixed soon. <laughs> so, so the time has come. Humanity has come of age. It's time to fix it. So, getting on to that topic. How to deal with the demon world, right? Especially these guys who are so crafty and so superior technologically in all this. Well, I found out something interesting today. They're electrical in nature, as I stated before, and it seems that magnets have a, an adverse effect on them. Magnets and hematite, which is magnetized, all right? So, in order to get rid of demons, Try wearing as much hematite as you can. Hematite anklets, hematite bracelets, and maybe a hematite, um, <laughs> maybe a hematite necklace too. They loathe and despise sunlight, and even uh, full spectrum light bulbs. <sighs> they are lulled to sleep by religious chanting music and spiritual chanting music or very quiet, soothing music. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yes, I mentioned earlier the sound hue chanted from your heart um, with a a careful inhale, a great deep inhale, and a great deep, deep exhale first and at the end. That'll help. Okay, so that's the first step. Uh, anything that, that inhibits, um, it, that ratchets up our own electric field might be of help that's something to explore. Like the exercises, the kundalini yoga exercise from magnetic field and electric field that I gave uh, earlier in, another in other blogs. Then I have noticed that they insert like uh, impediments, what do you call it, uh, malware, in uh, the etheric nets like blocks at places where there are muscle pains and stiffness. And these could be easily eliminated by doing stretching exercises. Gentle stretching exercises would greatly um, help prevent... The, for instance, the other day I noticed... See, there was this great influx of light over the weekend, and, and I began noticing many things that I hadn't noticed before. 
And one thing is that I became very sensitive to uh, astral cording, very, very sensitive. I still can't see it, but I can definitely feel it exactly where it's placed. And these are electric field, uh, imp imp how do you call it, imp imp um, impedance devices that they um, place from person to person on the astral realm, and those are the um, those are the blocking mechanisms, the electromagnetic blocking mechanisms that we can eliminate through the stretching exercises. Okay, and and plus other kinds of blocks, I think. Um, so there's the Kundalini Yoga. You have the hematite, and maybe using magnets on your body if you don't have hematite. Hematite is magnetized stone. And let's see if I've got anything else. Ratchet up on the heart energy and on positive emotions such as gratitude and appreciation as many great teachers have mentioned in the recent times. Uh, and that will make you not tasty. Not tasty. <laughs> um, I also use uh, crystals that have been set out in the sunlight, I place them on my heart chakra and on other chakras that I feel um, need uh, positivity. Um, and I do that at night. Also, you can place those kinds of crystals inside your house. And then there are ringing of gongs, ringing of um, uh, the symbols, especially the thick uh, Zildjian symbols. That is, uh, to them, it's a very... Um, I don't know if it hypnotizes them or what, but they, they just stop when I ring those symbols. And plus the um, Tibetan bowls, using those sounds. Uh, they don't like um, sweetness anywhere. They don't like sweet fragrances. They don't like flowers. They don't like happiness. They don't like things that are very healthy for our bodies. So that's that factor. Um, they hate laughter. <laughs> they hate it when we get together with other people and have a wonderful time. So, and they have said, and I would check carefully on this uh, before making a final determination, they have said that an alkaline diet is something that they don't like. So, um, I'm going to quit with coffee and see how that helps. And uh, there are probably many other things I can do with my diet to make it more alkaline. I don't know if this is the truth or not, but there are a lot of people that support the thought of an alkaline diet. <clears throat> Let's see, what else, what else do I have here? This is a long one. This is one of the longest ones yet. I'd like to conclude with some, some positive thoughts from some of my many teachers in the Ascension Path. Uh, one of the first things I learned was uh, the, the, the world view of Peggy Black, PeggyBlack.com. She, um, she said that, that life on earth is, is such a challenge, she said. There's such duality here. There are so many different forms of life, okay? For instance, those that I've been talking about. Okay, but in addition, here on Earth are many beautiful, friendly forms of life as well, with whom we can work to do the true, uh, the true calling of our soul. Okay, so so not to place too much emphasis on the negative, accentuate the positive instead. Think of our teams that are here with us to protect us and help us and guide us and teach us and deal with them on a daily basis. These are things that Peggy taught me long ago. And she also would bring up that it's only here on Earth and probably because of, of this, this situation here which is so diverse in life forms, in sentient life forms, that we are only starting to notice as a people. It's so very diverse and there's so, so many glorious life forms here that it allows us to do the work of co-creating reality together, which is transforming 
the, the negative to the positive and through personal alchemy creating this great new universe the magnitude of this is is mind-boggling really it's mind-boggling now I know as we go through the astral plane we're going to be coming on this greatly negative stuff as well as this greatly positive stuff okay but fasten your seat belts it's going to be a wonderful ride the things that await us are beyond compare and we are magnificent beings of light, absolutely magnificent, who have for a little while forgotten our own true greatness.